Branch protection is part of a set of configuration options that let repository administrators enforce policies, things like preventing accidental branch deletion, enforce code reviews, and require successful check before merging of pull requests. These options offer an effective way to increase code quality without impacting collaboration, and therefore, finding the right combination of settings to apply is very important. Let's explore the best practices for branch protection to help you maintain a healthy code base without impairing collaboration. Hi everybody and welcome back to Coded Dave. Today we are going to talk about the best practices around branch protection and branch policies, and to do so I will be using the GitHub interface. However, all the things I'm going to show you can and should be adapted to any other Git SCM. I've actually already published another short video in which I show you how to enable branch protection for both Azure DevOps and GitHub. You can find the link up here and in the video description. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and if you want to learn more about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video. Right, into today's topic. I'm going to group the best practices in four different categories. Branch protection, branch restrictions, required status checks and required pull request reviews. Before going into the details though, I want to talk about why branch protection is so important for both open source and enterprise collaboration. Collaborators with right access to our repo have complete write permissions on both all its files and the history, and while this is good for inner sourcing for example, may not always be desirable. For example, somebody may accidentally delete an important branch or overwrite this history by force pushing incompatible changes. Another common scenario is a collaborator introducing bugs by adding work that hasn't been tested. Branch protection and branch policies have a series of tools to allow you to keep control on your repo, keep high your code quality while still achieving collaboration. Alright, let's talk about the first category, branch protection. By enabling branch protection, you can ensure that any and all the branches you want could not be deleted either accidentally or intentionally, and also that their history could not be overridden by force pushing other changes. Let's talk about best practices. One thing you want to do is enabling branch protection to effectively prevent force pushing, for example to prevent the rewriting of the commit history. And also related to this, you probably want to check the box for include administrator at the bottom of the page that also apply this setting to organizations and repository admins. Another thing you want to do is enabling branch protection on the master branch or any branch meant for ongoing collaboration. Feel free to skip this for like work in progress branches which are meant to be eventually merged and deleted. Lastly, you can temporarily disable branch protection on a branch if it's necessary to force push commits to that branch. And this is because sometimes this may be unavoidable. Of course, in those circumstances, I would advise that all necessary precautions should be used and collaborators notified. Something that instead you don't want to do is expecting branch protection to prevent pushing commits which don't alter the commit history. If you want to disable pushing any change directly to the branch instead, you should use the setting require pull request reviews before merging. Please note that collaborators with write access pushing commits on top of a protected branch either directly or by merging a PR without any merge conflict will be unaffected by this setting. And the reason for this is that because merging a PR is basically like pushing the commits directly. Next stop, branch restrictions. It's possible to restrict the teams or individuals who can push to a branch at all by enabling the option restrict who can push to this branch. By default, all collaborators who have been granted write permissions to the repo are able to push to the protected branch. By explicitly specifying permitted collaborators, you will narrow down the list of people who can push to the branch. It's important to understand the implication of using this option, especially in conjunction with the others. By enabling this setting, you can prevent a user or a group from pushing directly to a branch, while still allowing them to open pull requests. However, they will not be able to merge those pull requests into that branch, and so only the allowed people in the list will be able to do so. The best practices in this case are the following. If you want to explicitly restrict push permissions to a specific set of collaborators, let's call them maintainers, then create a team for the repository maintainers. This allows you to simply add the team to the list instead of having to type in each maintainer individually. 
It's also one less thing to maintain when you're ready to promote collaborators to the maintenance team. Also, you can use this option as a way to bypass pull request-based workflows for bots or other apps that need to be granted permission to push directly to the branch. Finally, do not enable branch restrictions if your goal is to ensure changes needed to be approved before collaborators can merge their own work. Instead, use require pull request reviews before merging to spare maintainers from having to merge each individual pull request. As a side note, branch restrictions is a form of branch protection that is available for both public and private repos in GitHub Teams, Enterprise Cloud, and Enterprise Server. All right, we are halfway through. Before we continue, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video. It will help the channel grow and will mean the world to me. Next one is requiring status checks to pass before merging. If you test your code with a continuous integration system that sends build status back to your SCM, like for example using GitHub Actions, you can avoid broken code by requiring one or more status checks to pass on a branch before allowing pull requests to be merged. A very common scenario is enabling branch protection on the main branch by turning on require status check to pass before merging. You can also make sure that these checks are executed against the latest version of your code. In fact, if the target branch has changed since the pull request has been opened, a message will appear indicating that you need to merge upstream into the branch the new changes. Once the changes are integrated, a new build will be triggered and therefore the status checks will be updated to reflect the latest state. The best practices in this case are pretty straightforward. You should use the checkbox to include administrator to ensure this is applied to all the collaborators. Also, you want to use these required checks in conjunction with required pull request reviews before merging. This will achieve an effective collaboration workflow based on pull requests. And be careful about the quality of your checks because you don't want to require checks that may fail for reasons that are not related to your code, like for example flaky tests or external dependencies. Lastly, let's talk about requiring pull request reviews before merging. Code reviews are a critical part of any development workflow. You can require at least one review and approval by checking the require pull request reviews before merging checkbox. This option alone is very useful and when used in conjunction with require status checks, it provides teams certain collaboration guardrails to help with writing better code while maintaining high levels of productivity. In fact, when you enable this setting, you will make sure that no pull request can be merged into the target branch without at least one approved review. Reviewers can add comments or even require changes and pull request orders must respond to these request changes to have their pull request approved. Some SUS control managers, including GitHub, have an advanced tool that makes code reviews even better, code owners. Repository administrators can define exactly which people and teams need to review projects using the code owners file. This new feature automatically assigns reviewers based on code owners when a pull request changes any owned files, using the same syntax at the .gitignore file. For pull request reviews, the best practices include using automated code reviews tool to enforce objective code quality aspects, such for example coding style guidelines, to introduce a point of objectiveness in the process of code review and help keeping discussion between developers focused on more important things. Another important thing is enabling the extra flag dismiss stale pull request approvals when new commits are pushed, and this makes sure that reviewers are notified when new changes are pushed to a pull request they have already approved. Finally, if your SCM supported, use the code owner's file to ensure that changes to specific areas of the codebase are always reviewed by those with the most expertise. One thing you don't want to do is forcing specific people as reviewers unless it's necessary. Use instead groups and teams. This will indeed make it much easier to maintain the allowed approvers. Alright, that's it for today. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about these best practices, if you follow them already, or if you have any other recommendation. Things like enforce it con review. Whatever I will show you <laughs> will be updated to reflect the latest. The latest. Some source code trump. Mm. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Code Dave.